Okay, hi. Um, so uh, today I'd like to uh, talk about decoupling interpretations of efficient congruency. So, um, so let's first uh, discuss uh, the simplest case of efficient congruency that I know of, and uh, that's the case of uh, quadratic efficient congruency. In other words, the efficient congruency proof of uh, counting solutions to this system where the xi's lie between one and x. Um, and the key step in that case is the following. So um, we're going to fix the res uh, residue class C mod P to the B and eta mod P to the B. And C is not eta mod P. And the goal will be to count the number of solutions to this system where uh, the x1 and x4s are congruent to C mod P to the B and the other two, three, five, six variables are congruent to eta mod P to the B. And the idea is to control it by a count of solutions where the one and four variables are mod p to the 2b, and the other two, three, five, six variables are mod p to the b. So in other words, we've upgraded from uh, the data about x1 and x4 from mod p to the b to mod p to the 2. Uh, and, and then um, you have to do some other things, uh, so bilinearization. Those are, those are um, somewhat more standard. This is the key step. OK, so translation, dilation, and variance shows that we can assume that eta equals 0. Um, and uh, so now uh, we just want to count solutions where 1 and 4 are congruent to C mod P to the B. The others are current to 0 mod P to the B, and C is not 0 mod P. So uh, we can write uh, uh, Xi as C plus P to the B times Yi for I from uh, I equals 1 and 4. And the other Xi's we're just going to write as P to the B times Yi for I is 2, 3, 5, 6. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we look at the quadratic equation. The quadratic equation, naturally, it seems natural because the 2, 3, 5, 6 variables are equal to p to the b times yi, the 2, 3, 5, 6 variables squared are 0 mod p to the 2b. So it's natural to look at this equation mod p to the 2b. So once we do that, and we insert the definition for x1 and x4, we get this system. And then we do difference of squares and expand, and we get that this is p to the b times y1 minus y4 times this expression. This must equal 0 mod p to the 2b. Great. So, so we've used these two conditions. Now let's use the condition that C is not zero mod P. Then C is not zero mod P. This expression is not divisible by P. Therefore, all 2B powers of P over here must divide this P to the B times Y1 minus Y4 expression. Okay, so then, then this implies that Y1 must be Y4 mod P to the B. And so if we fix, if, if Y4 was something mod P to the B, then Y1 is also fixed mod P to the B. So then we know that x1 is congruent to x4 mod p to the 2b. So in other words, we've upgraded x1 and x4 from knowing what they look like mod p to the b to what they look like mod p to the 2b, up to whatever y4 is mod p to the b. But, but we've upgraded them from mod p to the b knowledge to mod p to the 2b knowledge. Uh, as for the 2, 3, 5, 6 variables, we gain no extra information. So broadly speaking, the steps of this key step uh, are that we use translation dilation variance to shift the four variables to be at the origin. And then we use the fact that um, since two, three, five, six are congruent to zero mod P to the B, the quadratic equation makes it reasonable to look at things mod P to the two B, or in other words, scale P to the two B to, to use uh, two different terminologies. And then the next step is to find diagonal behavior or show diagonal behavior in the remaining x1 and x4 variables. In other words, we want to try to find sort of square root cancellation or, you know, um, apply Plantrell in the harmonic analysis side of things. So um, given that, so, so th that proof from there was from uh, Lillian Pierce's uh, Borbaki seminar uh, exposition on decoupling and efficient congruencing. Now, um, in this slide over here, I'm going to give an interpretation, a decoupling interpretation uh, that gives a, uh, a proof of decoupling for the parabola that's different from the one originally found by Borg and Debiter. This proof on this slide was found uh, by, by myself in 2018. So here, um, we're going to have the extension operator be defined as follows. So this um, you should think of as sort of the uh, real, uh, the harmonic analysis version of an exponential sum um, that is considered in the Vinograd of mean value theorem. Um, so this is an integral over i, so maybe we're summing over some residue class over, over something of, of a certain length. Okay? And the decoupling uh, interpretation of the previous slide is to prove the following estimate. Um, so we have an extension operator over i squared, extension operator over i prime to the 4, and we've um, the right-hand side basically decouples the interval i 
into smaller intervals while keeping the four copies of the extension operator over I prime the same on both sides. So here, I and I prime are intervals of length new to the B. The, the distance between I and I prime is at least new, which, and you should think of new as new is a parameter about of size one. Um, so this corresponds to, um, remember on the number theory side, we are working with two residue classes, C mod P to the B, eta mod P to the B, C and eta are not congruent to each other mod P. So these are almost the same conditions. Okay. And, and B is some large ball that we won't deal with in this large, in, in the slide. Okay. So what was the first step? The first step was that in these four variables, in these four variables uh, over here, uh, well, what did we? We shifted eta to be zero mod p to the b. So once again, uh, by uh, parabolic rescaling, uh, we may assume that i prime is at the origin. i prime is an interval of length uh, is, is this interval, and uh, the other two variables, i, is uh, a large distance away from the origin. Okay. Now, what was the next step? The next step said that these four variables dictate what sort of scale I want to study my other two variables at. So the uncertainty principle says that the extension operator over zero comma nu to the b is essentially constant on vertical nu to the minus b by nu to the minus two b rectangles. Okay, this, um, the uncertainty principle basically says on, on uh, rectangles of this dimension, this expression doesn't oscillate so much. We can pretend that it's a constant. Okay? So this, um, so then what do we do? Well, to prove this estimate, what do we do? Well, we just partition, we partition our big ball b into rectangles, all of size nu to the minus b by nu to the minus 2b. And it suffices to prove this estimate over here, where instead of integral over b, we prove it over integral over each such rectangle. And then we just need to prove it over each rectangle. Okay? So we just need to prove this estimate. Okay. And then what, if we have this estimate, we just sum up over the rectangles. Okay. But now, this, this expression is constant on these boxes. So we can cross them out. It has the same constant both sides. So we ignore that for it. This is like how in the, um, in the uh, efficient congruence side, thing, the two, three, five, six variables are zero mod p to the two b. They, they, they don't, the scale p to the two b doesn't see two, three, five, six. So we can just delete them. And then what, do we, what was the last step? Well, the last step was to find square cancellation among the two variables. Right here, and this is a two, so we just use planche rel, and uh, 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 plus some steps, uh, planche, and then we apply planche rel, and so, um, and so then we're done. Okay, so uh, expanding upon these ideas, um, uh, so basically I just summarized the key step in in this proof. It, I gave a, a different proof of L two L six D coupling to the parabola that was inspired from efficient congruence. And expanding upon these steps with um, uh, various co-authors, Xia Mingguo, Paul M. Young, Pavel Zoran Kranich, um, Alan Cheng, Jaume de Dios, Rachel Greenfield, Asgard Jamnishan, and Jose Madrid. Um, we've interpreted various, um, uh, uh, given new proofs of various uh, decoupling theorems for the cubic moment curve, for the degree k moment curve, uh, for Cantor sets on the parabola. And um, so on the slide here, I've given you sort of on the left-hand side, you see the uh, various efficient augmenting papers. On the right-hand side, uh, you see the various um, decoupling analogs. Now, um, so for example, the, the, um, the borg demeter guth proof of decoupling for the degree k moment curve is a multilinear proof. Our proof gives a, a bilinear proof. Um, all these proofs are, are bilinear. Okay, so, um, so now here we've, I've talked about uh, interpreting decoupling efficient kinds in terms of decoupling, but what about the other direction? Can we, can we have more uh, arithmetic interpretations of decoupling? So um, here, we'll, let's, let's talk about discrete restriction. So let Kn be the best constant such that, um, such that this estimate is true um, for all sequences a n in, let's say, little l2. And um, in 1993, Borgan used uh, number theoretic methods to show that Kn is at least log n to the 1 6, and at most, the, the divisor bound. Uh, in 2020, Guth Maldog Wong um, recently gave a new proof of decoupling for the parabola over R. Um, and they showed that uh, the um, discrete restriction constant, uh, well, as an immediate corollary of their uh, decoupling term, they showed that discrete restriction constant um, is bounded by log to an, uh, some large power. Now, with uh, Xiaoming Guo and Polam Yang, 
we uh, follow their proof and we optimize their argument. Um, and uh, but, the, but the crucial difference is that uh, instead of working over R, we work over QP. And once we combine all these three, you know, by optimization and just working over QP, uh, we show that the um, discrete restriction constant is bounded by basically log squared. So why is working over QP advantageous? Well, first of all, we have the ultrametric inequality, basically that the um, p-adic norm of x plus y is bounded by the maximum of the p-adic norm of x and the p-adic norm of y. Okay, so this allows for the geometry to be very simple. So for example, um, so in, this, in the QP world, all the heuristics that are used in harmonic analysis are essentially true. Um, uh, so for example, tubes are unions of squares, um, intervals in the p-adic integers, which is the analog of the interval zero one. Uh, they're either completely disjoint and separated or uh, they're contained in one another. Another advantage is that the uncertainty principle is true. So the Fourier transform of the unit ball is the unit ball itself. Um, or um, if the uh, Fourier transform is supported on a rectangle theta, then uh, F is constant on any translate of its dual. And furthermore, we use, um, so you, you can prove decoupling terms in QP, but to pass them to sort of number theory knowledge, we used also the fact that six is even. So for example, um, the L6 mean value of the exponential sum, um, it counts the same uh, number of solutions as the L6 uh, mean value of the character or the, the, the sum of the p-adic character. Since this is essentially because counting solutions to the Vinogradov mean value theorem in the interval one to X. So counting solutions to this system over here where the X lies lie between one and X is the same as counting the number of solutions to this system where these are congruences and we look at mod P to the B where P to the B is much larger than X. Okay, so um, some further directions that, um, uh, that one can consider that I'm, I'm also considering. Um, so if one question you can ask is how does one interpret decoupling methods in terms of efficient congruency? Uh, can this uh, high-low decoupling proof of uh, Guthmann and Wong uh, be interpreted in language of congruences? So Polam, Xiaoming, and I can do it in QP. Can you write a version of that proof purely in, in the language of congruences with, with no uh, decoupling language? Um, how does one interpret old partial progress towards Vinogradov in the decoupling language? Um, this is an ongoing project. Um, and uh, so another question one could ask is, well, the efficient congruency inspired proof of decoupling for the moment curve uh, is a bilinear proof. And this is compared to the Borgan Demeter proof of decoupling, which is a multilinear proof. Um, are there any other bilinear proofs of decoupling? How, how far do these bilinear methods go? Um, okay, so that's all I have. Uh, thanks everyone for listening.